The Division 2 has seen a decline in its player base and viewership after the expansion Warlords of New York. Massive entertainment since introduced seasons, the recycling of content unlocking audio recordings that seem to wrap up the current story. December 8 introduced the fourth and final season, Season 4 End of Watch, although unbeknownst to me the comms collectibles contain a new subset, the Langley Report. The audio recordings haven't appeared in-game, but a Reddit user under the name of Definitely Anal 16 responsible for the leaks regarding Season 2, 3 and 4, datamined the audio recordings for the Langley Report. The 10 audio recordings detail status updates on the situations outside of the United States post-outbreak. This video will contain spoilers from the collectible subset Langley Report, however as the Langley Report doesn't affect the story of the Division 2, it doesn't spoil the story of the game. You have hereby been warned though. The Langley Report in name refers to Langley, Virginia, the location of the CIA headquarters and often used as a metonym for the CIA. It contains 10 audio recordings, each one involving Sarah, the president's aide, informing President Ellis. Sarah has been introduced in an earlier audio recording. Listen, Sarah, uh, do you have a moment? Of course. I wanted to personally let you know that I'm leaving for DC in a couple of hours. Isn't that risky? I've been assured I'll be quite safe. When are you back? Hard to say. Wow. Yeah, but I'm thinking of putting you in charge of things here, if you think you're up for it. Wow, of course. Good, that's good. In that case, I'll need to go over some things with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Sure, okay. It's hard to guarantee privacy in my office. Uh, we can use my quarters. Good idea. I'm going to read aloud the 10 audio recordings of the Langley Report as only the transcripts of the audio recordings have been data mined. Afterwards I will talk about how it ties into the lore and what it means to the story. You can use the chapters to navigate through the video. Status update. With such a low population density and already an intelligible government, support structures across many African nations, much seems to remain largely unchanged. I don't give a flying fuck about Africa. Why are you even briefing me about it? It's my job, sir. Well, stop briefing me on a continent with virtually no geopolitical significance. What the shit would we even do about Africa? Care, sir, you know I still have family there, sir. Status update. I synced with the Mexican ambassador Arturo Lechuga. Major urban areas are decimated, but rural areas and the Baya Peninsula are fine. Well, shit, Sarah, I guess we should take a vacation at unintelligible. Not funny, sir. Lighten up. The world's fucked whether we like it or not. Status update. I synced with Canadian intelligence. Major urban areas are decimated and Canada's national emergency strategic stockpile has been activated. Most of the western half of the country has dodged the worst of it. Rural British Columbia is mostly unscathed. I'm setting a team here, Sarah. If you live out bacterial filtration efficiency, you are probably fine. Yes sir, that seems to be correct. Those sons of bitches preppers aren't gonna let anyone lift this down. That's the least of our concerns, sir. Status update. I synced with an agent station outside Moscow. Despite the major effort to contain the spread, criminal enterprises thwarted at the quarantines just enough to ensure the containment failed. Ha! I hope the bare-chested buffoon suffered. I'm not sure that's pertinent, sir. I don't give a fuck. It's a menace to stability and peace. Status update. Immediate quarantine set in place and major points of ingress in Japan were quickly shut down. While this prevented the spread of the virus, food and supply shortages have been causing havoc. Fishing communities are pitching in to fill the sharp fall. Must be nice to be an island nation. I'm not sure starvation is better than a virus, sir. I am. This is a plague of biblical proportion. It's not a plague, sir. Stop being so goddamn pedantic. Status update. A report from our ambassador in India, there was a widespread outbreak and nearly complete social and economic collapse following in its wake. Major population centers have been devastated by the virus. India? Why the fuck am I gonna be worried about India right now? Have you seen the state of this place? Uh, the nuclear weapons, sir? What about them? India has them. If the government collapses and can't protect their stockpile, that's an issue for us. And really, everyone. Status update. An official report from the European Union. Despite political paralysis around committing people to quarantine, many European countries have weathered the outbreak well. 
Healthcare systems manage treatments and they show a high rate of success at treating the symptoms. Sounds like a load of socialist bullshit. The numbers don't lie, sir. That said, the collapse of their training partners has significantly impacted the urban centers with surface economies. Status update. As expected, not much in the way of information. Global economic trade collapse seems like it has an outside impact on the Middle East. The organization of the petroleum exporting countries are actively looking to trade crew and stockpiles for critical medicines and supplies. Well, that's a damn good thing we restarted drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It would have been even worse if we had to trade for oil. Sir, the ANWR drilling operation has been completely halted since the outbreak. Why the hell would they stop? I believe they experienced difficulty drilling without sufficient staff. Status updates. Reports out of Asia have been mixed. Economic devastation and catastrophic loss of life have been reported across the continent. Many regions seem to be largely untouched as well. Chinese authorities claim the situation is under control, but satellite imagery shows heavy population migration out of urban areas. Mixed how? What are we talking about? Initial news out of larger metropolitan areas show a devastating viral spread, but some Asian countries have had little issue with rapid quarantine procedures. So you're saying that human rights abuses have their benefits? Not at all, sir. I'm simply stating the reality that some countries have had less political backlash with strict lockdowns. Status update. Central and South America have coped relatively poorly. The breakdown in government serves to satisfactionalize the survivors and they coalesced into warlord factions, often led by former cartels with strong regional paramilitary power. Cartels? Fuck. Not solely, sir. Certainly without a market for their products, cartels have consolidated control over regions. We have reports of violent clashes with existing governmental militaries as well. Well, that's just fucking perfect. The first point of interest is, as mentioned, that the Langley Report in name refers to Langley, Virginia, the location of the CIA headquarters and is often used as a metonym for the CIA. It suggests that other than the division and joint task force, federal institutions have, or at least the CIA has, survived the green poison outbreak. Sarah mentions syncing with intelligence agencies from other countries and receiving data from satellites suggests that the CIA has active operations running, which backs the question. What has the CIA been up to in a period after the outbreak? And how isn't the CIA or its intelligence mentioned earlier in relation to the division, the sole organization attempting to provide continuity of government? The most uninspiring and most likely answer is that the developers haven't thought this far ahead. However, it's possible that the CIA is part of the division and irrelevant international information was kept from the division so as to not extract from so as to not distract from their objective. Or Black Tusk have influential members placed in the CIA too and kept information from reaching the division. Obviously I can think of many other hypotheses, but that's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down. But it's interesting to let your mind wonder what happened to the CIA and other federal institutions such as the FBI, NSA and US Department of Defense at the Pentagon. The second point of interest is that in the earlier mentioned audio recording, Alice trusts Sarah to take over his role in the NORAD headquarters in his absence. However, not only does President Alice show an absolute inadequacy to be in charge of the world's most influential geopolitical country, his unfriendliness towards Sarah is surprising. Alice hasn't returned to NORAD headquarters after leaving for Washington DC and his attitude towards his aide suggests he suffers from the growing stress that can only be caused by Black Tusk's manipulations and their decline in power. Plus, Sarah, with her caring attitude, wouldn't trust and want to work with Alice if she found out he was a traitor of the United States. With her gathered intelligence from the CIA, she must have found out Alice's treason, meaning she's either forced to work with him, accepts it, or the developers didn't think these audio recordings through. The third point to take away is that it's the first time we have heard about the areas outside of New York City and Washington DC, let alone outside of the United States. It's interesting to see that developed countries and continents like Canada, the European Union and certain Asian countries with strict lockdowns manage the outbreak quite well. On the other hand, it seems that Africa, Russia, the Middle East and the Central and South Americas have suffered heavily in rural areas without a fight, with a fight for power similar to the United States. The information on the outside world is still very limited, but there is potential for in-depth lore development and even another installment of the Division 2 in a different part of the world perhaps. Whether this would involve the Division, with it being a United States based institution, is doubtful. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. 
If you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis, I haven't created rewards yet, but I'm also open to suggestions. With that in mind, I want to say thanks to Jared Fox Gameplay Library, Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wreck, Sparky22 and Karsten Block for being members of the channel. Your support means a lot. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.